Hello YouTube, Jonathan Beaver here, and I have a boil on my face. I'm not going to give you a close up because I think that would probably be gross, but I developed it like a week ago. Here it is right here. I've had one before on my back, and I think that was a lot easier because I could just put heating pad on it and it ended up going away, even though it was a pretty gross experience. But um, this one is like on my face. And it's not clickbait. I'm going to title this video, I have a boil on my face because it's on my face. I think my neck starts here. I'm not sure about the logistics of this because it's kind of like on my jaw here. But anyway, it's not important. So I think in my last video I talked about how I had uh, um, signed up for a class at school, data driven websites. So that's not going to work out because they canceled my class. And um, what I wanted to make the video on, this video on, is victimhood and playing the victim. Because I think I'm slowly crawling out of um, actually doing that and, and having that view and perspective on my life that I'm a victim of messed up circumstances and, and a lot of people are victims of really awful stuff. I'm not trying to make light of anything that anyone has been through. What I am saying is that I think I've been really shorting myself when it comes to my perspective of being a victim. And I think, you know, we're more than that as humans and it can be extremely limiting so it's a problem victimhood so what have I been doing to try to alleviate that and to change it and soothe it and turn it into something else something that perhaps a way of thinking that perhaps has more leverage to it I have been trying to um, not make not make things such a big deal and I read this book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving uh, F I try not to cuss on this channel because my nieces have my <laughs> my nieces are subscribed to this channel when I go down and visit my family I make sure that they all subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to get at least 100 subscribers right well, I'm not going to curse on a channel that my nieces, you know, could possibly watch. Also, uh, I heard that YouTube is uh, taking away monetization for some people who curse. Not everyone. I just watched a video from Jenna Marbles tonight. She seems to do a good deal of it. And uh, anyways, back to the point. The problem. Victimhood. It's a big problem. And... Uh, We've had some financial problems over uh, Christmas. Um, had some stuff going on with my mom. I didn't sleep at night for like two months. And then uh, right after Christmas, I got sick. And then, <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that happened. There's a bunch of stuff that happened. Um, <sighs> my class getting canceled. Um, boil on my face. I got this, uh, I'll show you. I got this in the mail like last week. Well, I say it's last week. I don't need to pull it down. Um, I sold my mountain bike. That was in my last video. I got this Spark DJI Spark Flymore combo. Super stoked on it. Amazing technology. Couldn't believe how solid the thing was. And uh, this was another thing that happened. I, uh, Got it all set up, and on the second flight, and I mean I paid like $700 for it. On the second flight, I uh, just screwed up. I didn't know what I was doing. I went out to fly it. I walked around the block, and uh, when I when it, I also ran out the battery, so when it was trying to fly home on low battery. I didn't know that it would do that, so it actually at a certain point flew up and away from me at like a high rate of speed. 
which kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. I mean, that's weird. But it kind of felt like it was developing its own consciousness and wanted to get away from me. There was a more um, logical explanation for that. It just developed a new home point um, a block away. And it was trying to go up. I had programmed it to fly up 90 feet before it flew home on the return to home feature, RTH. And it was trying to fly up 90 feet and then go back home. Well, flew up and then into the street and hit this big old pine tree, which broke an arm off of it, and then it got stuck in the tree. So the job was to get it down, right? So I went, drove my wife's car underneath this pine tree and uh, put a, like had this extendy stick thing that my neighbor had, and I put masking tape on the end of it and just barely reached it. It was like 30 feet up. And got it out of the tree by poking it, continuing to poke it. And then it really, I mean, I'm, I'm like balancing on the top of my, my wife's roof rack and the drone came down and hit me in my face, my nose, like cut my nose right here. So I was bummed out. I got it back, I was super stoked to get that drone and it only lasted till the second flight. And uh, yeah. I immediately went into like, I was just so disappointed. I was like, oh my God, nothing's working out for me in my life. I can't seem to get over these depression and anxiety symptoms. Christmas was tough. We were having money problems. Everyone's against me. The whole world's against me. You know, the second flight of my drone, I crash it. Fuck comes down to my face. I got a boil on my neck, face, whatever. Whatever under your jaw is, boil. Propeller hits my grill. So I knew when that happened, I was like, dude, you really need to like sack it up right now. That's not even a good choice of words. I just knew and I f could feel like, dude, don't, don't, don't go into victimhood right now. Just don't do it, dude. It's just a, it's just a drone. You're going to get a new one or send it back or whatever. Like I'm pretty resourceful. You get it handled but don't let this like pull you deeper into a hole, right? And I really felt that that was extremely necessary at the moment. And But I, I didn't think I was gonna be able to do it. I thought, you know, as soon as I get inside, I'm gonna go into like this like, you know, downward spiral, I'm gonna be upset, you know, I'm gonna be mean to my wife and basically like miserable, right? But I was able to do it which was surprising for me. I got inside, we did some research. My wife actually helped me do all the online stuff. By the way, DJI, you need to do something about your refund policies online. That stuff is extremely, extremely confusing. Not like you're listening to watching this video, but yeah, hours of being online and we got it handled. And I kind of, I mean, I pulled through it. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, there's leverage in it. There's leverage in it. And it's not easy. I mean, I felt like I was out on a limb the whole time that I was choosing not to like go into victimhood about all this stuff, especially that night. But I feel like I'm slowly crawling out of this like faulty perspective because dude, come on now. Um, I don't have that bad of a life. You know, I go through things internally, stress and anxiety and these other symptoms that are all psychosomatic. Um, but overall, I really don't have the bad of life. I have a good life. I'm just, you know, physically miserable almost all the time. But, you know, my point is that choosing to, uh, choosing to not look at it as, as like the world is against me. And if I do think the world is against me, recognizing that I'm probably just against myself in some way and being willing to look at that stuff is powerful. And there's leverage in it. So, yeah. I don't know what else to add except for that. Oh, yeah. Well, this is also good. Uh, we've been looking at Puerto Rico. Um, just to add this in. So, solution for the victimhood thing, like I said, man. Look at it. What are, what are my values? Like, what do I value in my life? Because maybe they're off. You know? If I'm a psychopath and... I think that murdering people is a good idea and it makes me happy. And um, 
I do good at it and I get up and I say affirmations and I work out and I go about my business and I'm like, you know, maybe murdering people's a little, I don't know, not that great of a example, but what I'm trying to say is if I value screwed up stuff and if I, even if I'm kicking butt at life, then I'm probably not going to be that happy because my values are messed up. So I got to look at that stuff too. Uh, because I canceled, uh, because they canceled my class at school, I actually, the last two days, I'm pretty proud of myself. I've sat down, I've downloaded uh, a YouTube video, I have started coding again. So there's that, there's that. I'm finally getting back to work. And I feel good about that. Other than that, um, yeah, I don't have that much else to say. With the victimhood thing, I think it's just work. It's just moment to moment choosing, like, how am I going to look at this, dude? How am I going to look? Is it going to help me? Is it going to help me to be like, oh, poor me. Like, you know, things aren't going on. How come I didn't get into Bitcoin in 2011? I could be a millionaire. How come I, you know, how come things aren't happening how I think they need to happen? Well, I mean, there's a God. I'm not it. You know, I'm not the one. I'm just a human trying to do his best and it's not helping me to look at things in a negative light and I'm not talking about serial positivity because I'm not anything close to that I'm not even an optimist if anything I'm a pessimist what I'm talking about is getting, getting the leverage of not looking at things like it's just like stuff happening to me you know what I mean so yeah got a boil on my face struggling financially um, and I'm coding and I'm learning how to code a new language now, um, JavaScript and I just started it again. I think that was one of the things that made me quit two months ago, but it's not important. It's not this end date, the, the end of the journey, all that, like, you know, making a hundred grand a year, all that stuff really isn't important. What is, is like, am I doing my work and do I have a good attitude? Um, there's a casino down the street and I remember this uh, quote that's on the wall that said something like attitude is 90% of everything I don't know a little lofty but I think it's probably true you know yeah this video is probably long enough I am not editing right now I'm just cranking out a video about having a boil on my face and how I'm looking at it and uh, trying to practice um, making videos and being okay in front of the camera I've been holding this camera up. Oh, by the way, this is a new camera, Sony FDR X3000. It's a, it's a little white Sony uh, um, action cam. It's Sony's answer to the GoPro, and it is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. The image stabilization and everything on it is super good, and I'm super glad about the purchase. I don't like holding it up, but for some reason, I'm like more willing to make videos right now if I can just pick up this camera press record and you know get busy with it and then put it down when i'm done maybe i might buy a gimbal i don't know but that's about it continuing to work on victimhood getting back to sitting down to do my work and it's tough i need to get back in the gym too but you know everybody's got their struggles dude we, we all have a cross to bear it's all about you know moment to moment what decisions are you making and are they good for you? So, appreciate you guys showing up. I wish you all the best. And once again, this is Jonathan Buford. If you like the video, please do so below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that as well. I plan on building this channel. I'm not usually one who gives up for long. And uh, I'm glad to be back at it. And I hope you guys had a good Christmas season. Happy New Year and all that stuff.